We have come to the end of our series of reflections on the book of Job. So what might we learn from it? I'd like to suggest, in summary, a few points. First, we must never forget it is a story, a religious fable. So we must start by looking at it as a story and judging it as a story. Who are the good guys? Who are the bad guys? And we must not forget that we, the readers, have a special privilege no one else in the story has. It is, in fact, as if we are God, even though God, or at least a representation of God, features as a main character in the book. The good guy is clearly Job. The story is structured around him and asks the question, what will Job do in the face of suffering? Will he give up, simply accept his lot? No. Will he give up, curse God and die? No. What he does is never give up. And that makes him a hero, an unusual hero, because although he doesn't do the obvious, he actually challenges God head on. One of his friends, one of Mrs. Job, and Elihu. In many ways, these characters are types, those who embrace what Job refuses to embrace, easy answers or strategies to cope with evil. And who's the villain? The Satan? Actually, no. The Satan is just an observer or at best a kind of henchman of the real villain, God. God? A villain? Indeed. From our perspective, our God's eye perspective of the story, God is indeed the one who manipulates the events, obstructs Job's efforts, and even when faced with Job's persistence, is called out by Job and can no longer be silent, what does God do? He lies. God lies? Yes, God equivocates. God tells Job lots of exciting things about God's power, the bigness of the universe and Job's utter irrelevance in it. But he never tells Job the truth. It was all a setup, a bet, a game. Now this is a book in the Bible, not some text of a radical atheist, which is why we daren't say, oh well, this is just a story, because stories matter. They tell us how people see the world, even when it's a made-up world like the land of Oz. I mean, us, but it's the same difference. What should we make of it? Which brings me to the second point. How should we read the story? All our classical understandings of the book must come into question. It's all about the need for patience when we suffer. What nonsense. Job isn't patient. Job demands answers. So maybe then it's about the importance of asking difficult questions. Maybe. Or we could say it's all about the irrelevance of an individual's suffering in the face of a bigger picture, the world, the universe, etc. Well, not really. If that were the case, why does God deign to arrive to tell Job so? Yes, we are compared to the great vast cosmos utterly irrelevant as beings. But the very act of defiant searching and questioning by Job seems to say to us that somehow we still matter. Or perhaps the book is a reminder that we cannot second-guess the mind of God. Well, actually, by being the readers and having the full picture as we do, we actually have already got the mind of God, well, at least the character in the book. At best, our reading of the book of Job must leave us with more questions than answers. I think we need to face the truth that, like Job, we may never have the whole story, the whole account of what is happening and why, but that our duty as human beings is to always ask that question, why? Finally, third, how are we to understand God from this book? After all, it's in the Bible. Is God supposed to be understood as a capricious, cosmic tyrant who lies to his creation? And yes, this kind of God feels very much like a he, a kind of cruel, vain dictator. A God who blusters when his creation dares to challenge his authority. Such a view of God might seem at times to those who suffer, for no apparent case, a real possibility. Perhaps in writing Job, the author was suggesting that this could be the case, or perhaps that the God we believe in may be in truth a total enigma to us. Now, all our images of God are just that, images. 
are attempts to understand a mystery that we can never really know the side of eternity. All we can know is that our experience of God as we struggle to make sense of life is what we have. All dogmas are provisional. Like the dogmas on suffering of the friends of Job, they may or may not speak to one's experience. Perhaps the only response we can make in the face of mystery is to struggle onwards, always demanding answers and never afraid to ask difficult questions. Thank you, all of you, for joining me on this trip through the book of Job over the last few weeks.